SEO is tough and expensive. So that's why a lot of photographers don't want to put their energy into SEO. But today I'm going to share with you some basic tips about SEO, which a photographer can leverage. These tips are basic because they are easy to implement. But if you implement all these strategies, the results will be much greater than the basic stuff. Last week, I wrote a blog about SEO for wedding photographers. The link is in the description. This video is the squeezed version of that blog post. And if you are a photographer who wants to read in detail about the things I'm going to discuss in this video, then check out my description for the link. The blog post goes into the details of each and every tip I'm going to share over here with screenshots and a lot of examples. And yes, do check out my SEO book in the same blog post if you find this video useful. So all the tips today I'm going to share does not require you to buy any tool or pay anything for any tool. So let's quickly get into the first step, get listed. So this is probably the most easiest step of all the nine steps that I'm going to discuss. In this step, you have to make a list of five to seven or maybe 10 popular wedding photography related websites where you can get yourself listed for free. You need to be very careful while getting yourself listed on these websites because these websites needs to be authoritative in your niche and it should belong to your niche. So if you're a wedding photographer, find out popular wedding photography planning websites, wedding photography related websites. And you have to select only those websites which allows you to make your profile and allows you to enter your website address. In simpler words, if you go to your profile which you have made and if you click on your website, it should take back to your own website. Avoid any random or low quality websites which might even look spammy also. So do avoid all those kind of websites. And finally, don't overdo with the number of listings in a single day. You shouldn't end up with 10, 20, 30 such listings in a single day or a single week. It could harm you. This is the easiest backlink hack. So go for it. Step number two, install the Yoast plugin. And I'm assuming most of you are on WordPress platform. This free plugin will be used and will simplify the remaining steps of this process. And if you're not on WordPress, just skip this step. Step number three, choose the right title, headings and keywords. Every blog post has a structure. It starts with a heading or the title and then there are subheadings and then there are few keywords which are used in a blog title. Whether you are aware or not, you end up using certain keywords in your blog posts. So whenever you are making a blog post, make sure you make a small framework for your post, which should have a title, which should have subheadings and some relevant keywords associated with your topic. Your title should be around 50 to 60 words. You should have at least four to five keywords, which you will be using in your blog post. And you should have your subheadings ready which will go into the H2 and H3 tags. And now the most important part of this step, how to choose SEO friendly keywords, which you will be using in your blog post. I have discussed this topic in detail in my ebook, in my blog post, but to concise it over here, all you need to do is to understand the search intent of your respective clients or visitors. So if you're a wedding photographer, you are making a blog post with a title or a link with the name of the couple, it's not a good choice because imagine how many users or how many people will be searching the couple's name in the Google. Not many. Not many people will be searching weddings with the couple name unless until they are part of their friend or family circle. So in this scenario, when you have shot a wedding, how can you choose keywords? understand the relevant actors in a wedding. It could be couple's name, like I mentioned. It could be your wedding venue. It could be your wedding dresses. It could be wedding location, like hotel, city name, resorts, or some brands used in the wedding, like wine, jewelry, dresses, shoes, and cake. Now, jot down all these information in your framework before you even start writing your blog post. And like I said, the couple's name is not that important, so it won't go into the title or in any of the headings. You have to put yourself in the position of a person searching for something related to weddings. 
So let me give you an example. So somebody could be searching wedding at XYZ resort or XYZ hotel versus somebody looking for wedding of XYZ bride or XYZ groom. So the number of searches for a wedding at a particular location or a resort would be much more than people searching for a particular couple's wedding. Unless until that couple is a celebrity couple, then it's an altogether different game. Step number four, meta description and meta title. From SEO perspective, meta description and meta title are not that relevant now, but they are relevant for the user who is searching. Let me explain. So whenever you Google something, you will see the search results. So whatever title you're looking at is the meta title and whatever description below that title is meta description. It may not be directly associated with SEO, but it helps in a click through rate. A better title, a catchy title, a good description will make user click your search result. Let me give you an example. So when you search for something, there are 10 results on a Google page. Have you thought about when these results are in front of you? Why do you search the number one, number two, or maybe you would skip the number three or four and click the number five. Why does that happen? Because you see a catchy title or a catchy description that urges you to skip the top four and click the fifth one, or maybe click the second one, or maybe the third one. So make sure you use the meta title and meta description in a very thoughtful way that it encourages to click your link when you start ranking. Number fifth, image optimization. So if you're a photographer or a wedding photographer, the images are the most important thing on your website. The quality of image is not under my control, but yes, I can give you a few tips on how to use those images to your advantage when it comes to SEO. Google is working on its AI day and night and it is improving every day, every week, every month. But still, Google is more about text and less of images. Google can read easily the text you write as compared to the images. So that's why even if you are a photographer, what text you write in your blog post is way more important than what kind of images you are using on your blog post. Once the user reaches your blog post, then he or she may be deciding on your quality of photography. But imagine a scenario if no one lands up on your website or on your blog post, nobody will know what kind of quality you are providing in your photography. So whenever you are uploading your images, make sure to minimize their size in terms of kilobytes. Don't upload 1 MB, 2 MB, 3 MB images on your website because it is going to take time to load on your website when a user opens or even on a mobile phone. Google really cares about user experience. And if your website is loading slow because of heavy images, it is going to penalize you in some way or the other. And most probably it will be in terms of ranking. It will rank you lower. And second thing which you need to know is that whenever you are uploading an image, make sure you put an alternate text or the description for each image. Because Google cannot read your images or understand your images, but they understand your image based upon the text you write about that image. It's not the caption, it's the alternate text. Check this screenshot. So when it comes to image optimization, you need to understand two things. One, the size of the image should be very limited. And second, make sure you use alt text so that Google understands what your image is all about. And yes, what you need to write in the alt text, the fundamentals are the same. The keywords which you have shortlisted, the headings you have shortlisted, the title you have shortlisted, it should be the amalgamation of all those things. For example, if you have shot a wedding at XYZ location, so probably the alt text would have something about that location or something about that wedding at that location. And before we move to step six, one bonus tip if you're using an Instagram. So this alt text is on Instagram as well. So if you want your images to rank higher on Instagram, then you need to provide alt text in your Instagram images as well. At the time of recording this video, there was some issues on the Android version of the Instagram app but the alt text was working perfectly fine in iOS apps. 
Step number six, links. So we talked about the links in the step one, but these links are a little different from what we discussed in the step one. So there are two types of links, the internal links and the outbound links. So what are internal links? So the internal links are interlinking of one blog post to the another blog post. This interlinking should be based upon the relevancy and should not be forced upon. So let's say you have two blog posts related to a city. So these two blog posts can be linked together. And what are outbound links? So outbound links are the links where you link back to other websites. You need to have at least one outbound link from every blog post. So some of you might be wondering, you know, why I would pass on good SEO signals to other website. See, the Google works on interlinking of the entire web. So if you are a website, you are not linking to other websites, you are breaking the chain. You are not helping Google to interconnect all the relevant website. So they are not going to rate higher in their algorithm. So two things in this step, interlinking between the blog posts and at least one outbound link in your blog post. Step seven, submit your blog post to Google Search Console. Again, it's a free, but not many photographers are using this. So whenever you have created a blog post, go to Google Search Console, go to URL inspection and submit your link over there and request for indexing. So if you don't know how to set up Google Search Console, I have discussed this detail in my ebook. Step number eight, your website should be mobile friendly. Well, in 2020, mobile friendly website may not be that big issue because even if you are using a WordPress website or Squarespace or any website, most of the websites are mobile friendly these days. But you have to be very sure that you cater to mobile users as well. So what is the easiest way to check whether your website is mobile friendly or not? Google has a free tool to check your website whether it is mobile friendly or not. In fact, it allows you to check if your particular blog post is mobile friendly or not, if it has some issues or not. So submit your URL to the tool and check if it is mobile friendly or not. The link is in the description. You may or may not be aware more than 50% of search is now done on smartphones or mobile phones. So your website working well on mobile phones or smartphones is crucial. Step nine, the speed of your website. Yes, the speed of your website or the speed with which it loads on mobile phone or on desktop is very, very crucial for SEO. Your website has to load within two or three seconds for good SEO signals. And the bitter reality is that most of the photography website or the websites of wedding photographers are generally very slow. And Google doesn't prefer websites which are slow in loading because it hurts user experience. Because imagine a scenario, if you are opening any website and it is taking four, five, six, seven seconds to load on their smartphone on desktop, what is our immediate reaction? We leave that website. We go back to the search engine. So Google doesn't want to list those websites on Google or rank them higher on Google where the user experience is not good enough. So how can you make your website fast? Go for good hosting, use SEO friendly templates if you're using WordPress. And one thing which I've already discussed, image optimization your images needs to be of smaller size so that your website loads faster. I will mention two important tools which are free so that you can check the speed of your website right now. One is PageSpeed by Google and the second is GT Metrics. Both the links are in the description. Both of these will come up with some technical data but to make things easier for you all you have to do is that you have to be in the green zone and if you're not coming in the green zone that means your website is slow and some tweaking is required so these are the nine steps which i want you to take action on and i can guarantee you if you take all these nine steps you will see the improvement in your ranking within one week to three months depending upon the age of your website these are result oriented beginner seo tips but the results are way beyond the ones you would expect in beginner tips and like i said if you want to get to the details of each of these steps i urge you to go to the blog post 
read the entire blog post where I have discussed in the detail about each step so that you can implement at your own end. And yes, after going through this video and blog post, if you are interested, I urge you to check out the complete SEO book, which will help you to level up your SEO game. And keep in mind, SEO is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing activity. Every blog post has to be SEO friendly so that you don't lag behind. If you have any questions, any queries, comment below. I will get back to you. And if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel. I'll be back with another informative video. Till then, bye-bye.